Hello, everyone. So I was asked to say a few words about Mary Bowman. So as you can see, she was beautiful. <laughs> um, so Mary worked at the Women's Collective for a period of time as a very, very fierce advocate on behalf of black women, lesbian women, um, and, all, and women of color specifically. She, um, she went up to Capitol Hill with us. She went up to the mayor's office. Um, she was awesome with the staff and with the clients. She loved the clients and she would perform her poetry and she will test them out with us. She'll bring them and she'll perform them and she'll want feedback. Um, so, um, Mary was a young lady who was born with AIDS um, and lived a full, fierce life with lots of struggles. So, we were heartbroken um, when we got the news that she had transitioned. So, we want to definitely want to remember her, and I know that she's left us with lots of really great spoken words, especially um, HIV in the HIV community. So please um, research her and listen to all of the awesome words that she has left us. Thank you. So, Mary Bowman, who I remember just last year being here. Um, she was an awesome poet. Um, our first, uh, first Mary Bowman Award is going to go to Dwayne Lawson Brown. As Dwayne makes his way up the stage, uh, Dwayne and Mary, <laughs> Dwayne and Mary knew each other and traveled the same artist and HIV activist circles in DC, both having passion for creating poetry and tackling HIV stigma. I personally met Dwayne in 2009 when he worked for Metro Teen AIDS. He led my HIV 101 trainings for the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation internship program for seven years, and that was four uh, internships a, a year. We probably covered about 400 interns in, within that time that worked on the Hill. Dwayne was younger than most of the interns when he started. These interns attended prestigious colleges and universities all over the country, and oddly enough, most of them never had a sexual health class or discussed HIV. His personality and his knowledge of HIV made them feel very comfortable, comfortable enough to engage and ask very personal questions, but important questions about sexual health and sexually transmitted diseases. He always was there when, you, when I needed him, and I'm so excited that he is rece receiving this first award because it is definitely well-deserved. He is a true he hero helping us fight stigma. Thank you, Dwayne. Please welcome Dwayne Lawson Brown. Forgot to mention, he is also a crochet king, which is his Instagram name. I mean, he is amazing, like does amazing work. Yes, feel free to say a couple words. Uh, hello, everybody. I am absolutely honored uh, to receive the Mary Bowman Award. Um, I have a few notes because I know that I would just kind of get overwhelmed with emotion. About 20 years ago, on this very stage, uh, was a moment for me. Um, I was invited by Metro Teen AIDS and Howard University's Campus Pals program to share some poems in a showcase, and there were people in every seat in the building, and I shared a poem uh, talking about positive attitudes relating to sexual and reproductive health. Um, just trying to get people to just have a, a open idea around talking about HIV um, so that we can really grow as a community. And that was the beginning of 
my putting together activism and my artistry. Um, and there's a history of that happening within spaces like this um, and across the country. And so I'm absolutely honored to continue that legacy. But I'm even more so honored because of who this award is named after. Mary, Mary was often described as fearless. And I think that may be a bit of a misnomer. Mary knew fear. Mary knew how dangerous it was to go out in the streets, black, gay, oh, lesbian, black, uh, dom, black, femme, black, all of this. Um, HIV positive, all of this. Uh, living with HIV. Mary knew the deal, but Mary did not stop. She faced the fear. She lived and went beyond the fear. And I think that is what really makes you brave. Less fearless, more brave and willing to speak out for everybody who came before and all of us after. And so that's our challenge. Uh, I challenge myself in the name of Mary to continue to do the work, to continue to create spaces where people can have open dialogue and, and talk with less fear, uh, to really talk about what you equals you looks like and means in our community. Um, and the reason why there are folks that are afraid to say it, uh, really doing the work. And so I'm absolutely honored to receive this award and I'm honored that Mary is still with us in the work that we do. Thank you. Get an award, you gotta give the award, right? Okay, here's the award. Dwayne, congratulations. And I had some pictures, my people. Can you show my picture of Dwayne? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he said, oh my gosh. I had some pictures of Dwayne in action on the hill. There he is. Dwayne, there's your picture. Yes, that's us working with the interns. And then we did WHUR. We were at Whitman Walker, um, their parking lot in Southeast. And we did HIV testing with the interns. It's awesome. Hey! There you go. We got left. So what we didn't do is that we have an audio or, or video clip of, um, of Mary Bowman performing her poem, Dandelion. Can we play that? In 1992, my mother died of uh, complications with AIDS, and I was born HIV positive, so a lot of the uh, poetry that I write and a lot of the work that I do in my life um, is dedicated to promoting awareness and letting people know about AIDS and HIV. Um, and so, here's this poem. It's called Dandelions. A dandelion in the midst of rose bushes would stick out like a sore thumb to ignorant souls. But I know the road this dandelion endured. This weed that all gardeners want to destroy is more appreciated by God than any seemingly beautiful bush of roses. Though that mutely misunderstood mellow yellow dandelion won't for long last, let it be known that God gave her the role of the outcast for divine importance. My mother was a dandelion in the midst of roses. Ignorant of her purpose, she uprooted her soul and unknowingly left herself for dead. It has been said that my mother went above the influence, transmuted broken hearts into smiles, all the while dying on the inside. AIDS didn't kill my mother, it put her at rest. Now this songbird whistles in the key of silence and I, the latter of five, write poems documenting the struggle unknown to my family. The sickness she denied lies in my blood with the lesser value people speak. I don't know how you can live with knowing nothing but owning the growing dis-ease that your mother for so long fought. Just the thought alone would destroy me, but see, that's the difference between a rose and a dandelion.
Roses were created with thorns to warn hands approaching without caution, but dandelions weren't given that option, but they were created by an all-knowing God, and that all-knowing God created dandelions with the strength to withstand ignorance and hatred. Dandelions live in this matrix of life, understanding the price. Roses live like the world was handed. Dandelions have to take the world and won't leave a rose stranded, but my mother died before she got the chance to realize that dandelions are blessings in disguise. She, I dare say, died before her time. That thought lingers in my mind, conflicting with my belief in the divine. My mom raised me in the faith that the day God sweeps you away is a day proclaimed way before the manifestation, but I can't help but experience devastation Knowing nothing about the woman who carried me, toting guns in the defense of my father, it is even harder knowing nothing about her, but knowing the reason the hospital has become my second home is because this dandelion chose to roam with the buffalo. But I seek serenity in the fact that she just didn't know that she, a dandelion, was just as beautiful as a rose, and I will go forth. Knowing my purpose as a dandelion, this life is worth all the crying and all the dying I have to do just so someone in my shoes can live. I will gladly give myself as the sacrifice if it means that dandelions in the world will become viewed as more than the consequence of sins behind closed doors. You can lay me on my back and present me lifeless to God if it means that dandelions with unseen scars would not be viewed as odd, but as gifts from God to show the world that beauty lies not in the petals of flowers, but in the power of unconditional love and in the strength of the untouched, unhugged, sometimes unloved, but most important of all, unbudged dandelions. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to say a few words about our friend and fellow advocate, Joseph Hall. Joseph Hall passed away on October the 6th, just a few weeks ago. Ten years ago, Joseph Hall was part of the planning and the execution of the first uh, stigma conference, and he did it with great pride and just loved this community. He came a couple of other uh, conferences after, but he was a, research, a fierce research advocate, and Joseph had a proficiency for science and he helped to break down the science and bridge the gap between community and scientists around HIV research. So I'm really proud. He's, uh, he, was a, he was his own man, very much uh, a free thinker, made you think, made you, it provoked a lot of thought on the, on the part of everyone. Uh, Joseph uh, was a prolific writer and a very gifted writer. Uh, he taught writing to uh, uh, incarcerated men at Jessup Correctional Institute and really felt, had great pride in that as well. So I know that he is with us in spirit here. We miss him very much. We are his friends. We are his family. And we thank um, the conference uh, organizers for recognizing Joseph in this way. Thank you so much. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have another hall that we're remembering today. This is uh, Daniel Hall. Um, he came to us as a grandparent who had recently been involved in the care of his two-year-old daughter um, upon the death of her mother, uh, not only being tasked suddenly with the care of a two-year-old, but also uh, a formerly unknown HIV-positive two-year-old. Um, so he jumped into this task wholeheartedly and was one of our most meticulous caregivers. In later years, he loved to say how she wasn't supposed to live past the age of eight but she's now 25 with two children of her own. <laughs> when, we, when we reinvigorated our Community Advisory Board, or CAB, which was connected to our HIV clinical trials, he was the first one to jump in line. When we were later asked to put a representative at a more regional and national level, he was again first to jump in line. From that point, somehow unbeknownst to himself, he found himself as the international level representative um, serving a one or two year term um, representing HIV patients all over the world. Um, back at the local level, um, as Dr. Anna mentioned earlier, um, we had several early planners of this conference and he was one of the most significant ones 
um, always ready to lend a hand. This was him um, at the 2012 International Conference here in Washington, D.C. So um, he did pass this past spring in April, and uh, we'll always remember his warm smile, his can-do spirit, and sense of humor and positive outlook. Thank you, Pastor Hall. Hello, family. I'd like to read you a poem written by David Harkins, and the title is She is Gone, But I Make Changes in Order to Address They Are Gone. You can shed tears that they are gone, or you can smile because they have lived. You can close your eyes and pray that they will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that they have left. You, your heart can be empty because you can't see them, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember them and only that they are gone, or you can cherish their memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what they would want you to do. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Thank you. I'm going to start over. I had enough heartaches, had enough headaches. I've had so many ups and downs. I don't know how much more I can take. Mm. See, I decided that I cried my last tear yesterday. Either I'm going to trust him, or I may as well walk away. Because stress on, don't make it better, don't make it better, no way. See, I decided that I cried my last tear. Yesterday, yesterday, ooh, yesterday, any problems that I have, he's greater, he's greater than them all, so I decided that I cried my last tear. Yesterday, I sung that song for a reason. When Michelle wrote the poem, I realized that was the perfect song in this situation. As we celebrate 10 years of stigma, I can reflect I'm a person living with HIV for 14 years. 14 years ago, I remember they told me I could not have children. Well, I have four, and each one of them are HIV negative. Thank you all for attending the conference, and you guys be blessed.